From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. What is going on in Wyola? We have no clue why they're closing a school. Students haven't been to class for a full week. Just concerned about our kids. They need their education. This shouldn't be happening right now. And even the state superintendent says she can't get answers about the closures. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Friday, October 13th. I'm Augusta McDonald. Superintendent of Montana Public Schools, Elsie Arntzen, tells us she's been reaching out to school trustees but has not heard back. There have been no classes held since a protest last week by parents who claim Wyola staff is abusing their children. Authorities were called and one parent was arrested for assaulting a teacher. Arntzen says her office won't force the school to hold classes. They are governed by a local board. And I would like to honor that. I want to make sure that the board is the one that makes the determination, uh, not the state. I believe the community does have children in their heart and education, of course, in their heart. So it's challenging at this time, but I believe a resolution can be made. OPI employees were actually at the Wyola school when the authorities were called helping with federal grants. Arntzen tells us she told them to leave immediately. The man accused of placing exploding tinfoil balls on Billings streets pleads not guilty to seven felony charges. James Coleman's arrest last week or this week came with a seven hour shutdown of Highway 312 to search his property. Investigators claim they found explosive materials like flash powder and a detonator cord at Coleman's Heights residence. They also found methamphetamine and firearms. Authorities say Coleman admitted to them he started making the explosive six months ago, even describing how he did it. His bond is now set at $100,000. And the Montana weather is doing Montana weather things. Let's take a look. Our Phil Van Pelt took a drive from Red Lodge up the mountain to the resort yesterday, experiencing fall and winter just 10 minutes apart. While Red Lodge Mountain won't open for skiers until late November, this first snowfall of the season already has many dreaming of the fun to come. It's really coming down up there. It's been coming down since last night. Uh, some inch an hour snow last night throughout the night. And uh, yeah, but you know, uh, no snow in town for now, but we're getting pumped up for ski season for sure. The general manager of Red Lodge Mountain is advising extreme caution for any thrill seekers hoping to get a backcountry ski in. And of course, that was a couple of feet almost up there, Miller. Oh yeah, in fact, let's take a look at some preliminary totals that are coming in. And now these are just a few of the numbers. We're waiting for uh, full totals to come in, not only for the, uh, the snow that we got in the mountains, but of course, the lower elevation rain. But uh, Red Lodge reports of 23 inches of snowfall. Down in Burgess Junction, 34 inches of snow. Things are clearing up now, but there's still a chance we could see a little bit of snow in the higher elevations, especially around the Bighorns today. A little bit of energy left behind that area of low pressure, but improving weather as we move forward. Now, it's very cloudy out there right now, very humid. Some areas uh, seeing some fog out there this morning. Could be... Uh, kind of dense in some areas, so just keep that in mind during your commute. It was chilly yesterday, 40s and 50s. We only hit 50 yesterday for a high, and we had a record amount of rainfall here in Billings. No Billings, uh, um, uh, Sheridan. Sheridan almost had an inch and a half of rainfall. That was a record. Uh, even Red Lodge down in the, uh, the town there, over two and a half inches of rainfall. That was a record. So yeah, very soggy day yesterday. Take a look at the moisture totals. We're still in very good shape here locally. This is what it looked like over the last 24 hours with all that rain and snow coming down. Looking pretty good out there right now as weak high pressure starts to take over. We dry out and we slowly start to warm up. But it's chilly out there right now. 39 feels like 36. Look at that humidity at 93%. That moisture is still very thick out there. A lot of cloud cover with temperatures in the 30s and 40s. But improving for the weekend. But do we have another cool down on the way as we get to next week? We'll talk about that and a whole lot more coming up in just a bit. All right, Miller, thank you so much. Last week it was right here in our studio and tonight it will be at Metro Park packed in pink as the Nile Rodeo begins with the tip of the cap to breast cancer survivors. Q2's Alina Howder takes us out and about to find out what makes this night so special year after year. Out and About is sponsored by Blue Creek Storage at Shorey. The Nile Rodeo is back in Billings with a new addition for ladies, breakaway roping, empowering for not just one competitor, but for breast cancer survivors who will be here at Metro Park Friday for Pink Night. Yeah. Prior native Sarah Verhouse has been breakaway roping since she was old enough to hold a lasso. I think it's just something that you feel like you were meant to do it and I've just always loved breakaway roping. I could literally rope all day every day. And now Sarah will get to compete in the sport she loves in a setting that's near to her heart. The Nile's just always been special. Like 
I say I grew up watching my dad compete and never thought Breakaway would get to be a part of it. It's something that she's excited to share with a special group of ladies who will be at the Nile Friday. Breast cancer survivors like Carrie Young. What about you? What's your story? I actually would come here and I would see the ladies, you know, come out and wearing pink and I thought, oh, those women are so strong. And for me, I'd had Hodgkin's lymphoma, so I was like, wow, breast cancer would be really difficult. Unfortunately, she would learn firsthand. After battling and beating the lymphoma, she was diagnosed with breast cancer last year. The breast cancer for me um, had more than likely been in my left breast for eight to 10 years um, because I had dense tissue. The same team at St. Vincent Healthcare is helping Carrie battle once again. 80% of women will be able to find their breast cancer like through lumps and MRIs. And but for the other 20%, an ultrasound is what showed it for me. But as important as that aspect is, she says there's more to this fight than treatment, like packing the Nile in pink. I think it's important that don't sit at home, you know, and just shove it down, come out and be with the rest of us and we can all share each other's stories and it really helps. I think it's just really special that they feature women and feature people that are having those struggles or going through things and that research and, you know, detection is important. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. And we're still fundraising for Pack the Place in Pink. Go to ktvq.com slash pink right now to make a donation. We raised over $12,000 since last Friday, which is really exciting. All of the money you give stays right here to help breast cancer patients in Montana. And uh, also on our website at this link, we have a photo booth of everybody who walked the pink carpet last Friday and uh, joined us in our pink breakfast. There's 70 some photos, so yours is probably up there. If you had one taken, go uh, yeah, take a look at that. They're all really fun. Make sure you download yours. Israel is now ordering an evacuation of part of Gaza as its airstrikes against Hamas rain down again today. Israeli officials say they've dropped 6,000 bombs over the past six days. The death toll on both sides continues to climb, now topping 2,800 people. CBS's Chanel Call has the latest on this conflict. As Israel prepares for a potential ground invasion of Gaza, it's now warning the United Nations that more than a million people from the north must move south in the next day. But the UN says that's impossible without devastating humanitarian consequences. The situation for residents in Gaza, nearly half of them children, is already dire with hospitals overwhelmed. Israel's aerial bombardment on suspected Hamas targets continues now seven days after the terror group launched a brutal surprise attack on multiple communities, killing men, women and children. Absolute pure hell that broke loose and destroyed everything that we know. As the violence escalates, the U.S. State Department says it's arranging evacuation flights to get Americans out of Israel. The agency says at least 20,000 U.S. citizens have reached out since Hamas attacked. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the people of Israel. Yesterday, Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with leaders in Israel. Today, he's in Jordan for meetings with King Abdullah and Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas. Hamas is calling for worldwide protests today, prompting U.S. law enforcement to step up security in Jewish and Muslim communities. Fences have also been installed around the Capitol in Washington. Chanel Call, CBS News. In a continued show of solidarity, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin is meeting with leaders in Israel today. Secretary of State Blinken will also travel to Qatar, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. A Missoula-based federal judge is promising to release an opinion soon on whether to put Montana's law banning TikTok on hold before it takes effect on January 1st. A lawsuit challenging Senate Bill 419 got a hearing yesterday. The law says TikTok cannot operate in Montana and that app stores can't offer it for download within the state's borders. It institutes penalties of up to $10,000 for each violation with another $10,000 each day a violation continues. An attorney representing TikTok creators said banning the app would interfere with their first Amendment rights of free expression, while the state argues the law is meant to protect Montana's data privacy from China. Many believe this is going to be a test case drawing attention across the country. We'll continue to follow that. And a new report shows inflation remains high, but prices for some items are improving. CBS's Bradley Blackburn takes us inside those numbers. Price hikes at the grocery store are getting closer to historically normal levels, up just 2.4 percent last month. But rent prices remain a problem, with rates going up more than 7 percent. 
Overall, inflation rose 3.7 percent in September, a big drop from last year's peak, but still above the 2 percent target regulators want to see. I think when we look at how consumers are managing their personal finances here, uh, it's still a juggling act for, for many Americans. That includes senior Stephanie Raha. And certainly the go-to restaurants, coffee shops, the prices are just stunning compared to a couple of years ago. Raha and others on Social Security will soon get more money. The cost of living adjustment is going up 3.2 percent starting in January. That's way down from the last benefit increase because inflation has dropped significantly in the past year. But the average recipient will still get a boost of about $50 a month. Would that be helpful to you? It would. I mean, I, I do have some savings, but that Social Security matters a lot. Inflation has stayed above 3% since June. Now the Federal Reserve has to decide if more action is needed. The Fed has been raising interest rates to slow rising prices and previously signaled there could be another increase before the end of the year. And a cut won't come anytime soon. Whether there's one more rate hike or not between now and the end of the year, the expectation is fully that rates will remain higher for longer. The Fed will make its next decision on rates in November. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Now closer to home, more than 270 employees are out of a job with the sudden closure of a Billings trucking business. Metal Arc Transport lost its broker authority in August, meaning the company could likely no longer prove it had the proper insurance to haul cargo. Company headquarters at 2913 Millennium Circle is now for sale. The business was started four decades ago and eventually grew to 40 terminals nationwide. You can buy one standard size rubber duck on Amazon this morning for less than a buck fifty. But right now in Roundup, they're uh, worth a whole lot more. Q2's Charlie Kleps tells us why kids are hunting ducks in the name of mental health. An organization called Youth Cares has hidden 24 different rubber ducks just like this one in the community of Roundup. As you can see, they come with a positive message as a way to boost the mental health in the community. And I don't want to give it away. If you're from Roundup, you probably know exactly where I'm standing. But there's still many just like this one waiting to be found. There's so many people that feel alone. In the small town of Roundup, there's been a growing mental health crisis. Daily, we're dealing with some kind of struggle. Those daily struggles have become life-threatening. We were at a 54%, and within a year, we jumped up to 67.5% of our students are depressed or suicidal. Prevention specialist and Roundup parent Angie Mosqueda says those shocking numbers are what inspired her to form a mental health program. But hers does things a little differently. Instead of adults telling kids what the answers are, we really need to go the peer on peer route. Her program, called Youth Care, gives current high school students the chance to help as ambassadors. I've definitely had my fair share of my own struggles and having to help my friends and other classmates with struggles. So having an official program that kids can rely on is definitely something I was excited to start. There's not a whole lot for kids to do, and that's kind of one of our big things, is trying to make activities for kids to do and, you know, get away from stuff that might not be great for them. And so they created a new activity called the Duck Hunt. So this one's here. We kind of put them in places that are kind of obvious, but not too obvious. Where rubber ducks are hidden around town with positive messages like... Attitude is the little thing that makes a big difference. Those that find a duck, like fourth grader Annabella Fluitt, don't just receive some encouragement, but they're entered into a raffle as well. There's not that much stuff like going around, like fun stuff like this, so I got really excited. Eleven are still hidden, and we didn't want to give exact locations away, but Mosqueda did offer a little hint. I would say eight. Eight might be on Main Street. A simple game, but one residents believe could make a big impact. I mean, it's sharing positivity and it's building people up, and that's what we want to do. In Roundup, Charlie Kleps, MTN News.